Carl Moss went from a burned out bureaucrat to something much, much worse. Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you like history, don't forget to check out our sister channel. So, Principal Carlton Carl Moss, educator, schemer, eventual counterfeiter, appeared in a good number of episodes. We know that he graduated from Brown University and Heimlich Community College from diplomas on his wall, and he might have a doctorate in education, which is kind of frightening. His first appearance was in Halloween, where he informs Hank and the guys that Junie Harper was complaining about their haunted house in the school gym, playing the look my hands are tied here role which was pretty much his forte as principal. Also we know from Bois My Nose that Carl was on the same football team in high school as the guys and refers to Hank by his first name yet refers to Dale as Mr. Gribble which is kind of weird. He appears in Bobby Slam first off screen denying Peggy better equipment for her girls general sports class and then on screen having a meeting about Connie wanting to join the wrestling team. And after completely butchering Khan's last name, now, Mr. Sinfonis, Sinfon, I'm, I'm sure there's a simple solution to all this. He tried to convince Khan and men to have Connie join the gymnastics team for an interesting reason. Perhaps you could persuade your lovely little gal to take gymnastics. Asian girls usually excel at gymnastics. I mean, with their tiny little feet, Bounce beam seems as wide as the sidewalk. Also, his glasses changed in the middle of talking for some odd reason, but whatever. And to spank with love, he fires Peggy for spanking Stuart Dooley. In Little Horrors of Shop, he hires Hank as the temporary shop teacher, later telling Hank that they didn't have money for fancy teaching aids like wood and complaining that all parents care about is... Wouldn't Give it a rest, Hank. All parents care about these days is zero tolerance, drug policies, and literacy. Why can't Johnny read? Why can't Johnny read? God, that gets old. We also learned in this episode that Carl was the best in shop class with a coping saw, that he has a wife and kids, and we get one of my favorite Carl Moss quotes. They'll just put the tools down if they want to do the drugs bad enough. Carl catches Bobby with a keyhole saw that Hank brought from home, leading to Bobby being suspended and Hank being relieved of duty. Yet again, he plays the My Hands Are Tied card due to zero tolerance. Next, he appeared in Bobby Goes Nuts, yeah, the episode best known for... That's my purse! I don't know you! He calls Hank and Peggy into his office because Bobby keeps kicking boys in their testicles, and of course, he has this moment with Hank. Hank, can I talk to you alone? I'm not as principal to parent, but, you know, man to man. Uh, sure. You can't have your boy going around kicking people in their testicles. I know that, Carl. He joins Luann's pool Bible study for obvious reasons in The Good Buck. In I Never Promised You an Organic Garden, Peggy talks him into letting her take over the organic garden as long as it benefits the football team, whose poor performance had apparently threatened his job the year before. And we find out that at one time, Carl had a ponytail that, according to Hank, made him look like a jackass. He calls Hank and Peggy into his office yet again in the Witches of East Arlen, this time because Bobby was practicing the mystical arts on school property. I can't have him praying in my office. School board's very clear on that. In Cheer Factor, we learn that he drives a black Altima, typically parked in front of the school, which Dale later eggs. Sorry I'm late. It took longer than I thought to wash the eggs off my car. Sorry I'm late. It took longer than I thought to egg Moss's car. And after Peggy leading the cheerleaders to actually cheer leads to positive results on the field, he promotes her to head cheer coach, but then has to defend her in front of the school board when they're accused of a hate crime by beating a leprechaun during the halftime show. Oh, a little side note here, in real life the school board would have no say in the matter and it would be decided by the UIL or University's Interscholastic League, which is the governing body for school sports in the state of Texas. After they get to keep their win, Carl will leave Peggy of her duties as cheer coach, but at least... Now you can keep teaching Spanish, but we're going to have to keep an eye out in case you decide to go after those people. Now up to this point, Carl Moss hasn't been that great of an educator, but he's done a decent job. That starts to go downhill, and his schemer side becomes more prominent. In Bobby Ray, he has soft drink machines installed all over the school in order to raise money for the faculty trip to Cancun. However, after Bobby makes a scene about them in front of a school board member, the machines have have to be removed, but they're replaced with tickers that advertise products like an energy bar. When Bobby bursts into the teacher's lounge,
challenge demanding that the tickers also be removed in order to impress a girl, Carl notices Bobby's motivation and has a chat with him, explaining how he had been upstaged by a guy while serving in the Peace Corps and offers a school dance as a compromise. Bobby agrees, but when the girl is unimpressed, he calls for a student walkout when the tickers aren't removed. In the Powder Puff Boys, Carl asks for cleaning supplies in a PTA meeting, which is denied, and when the head of the PTA tries to stop the boys from dressing up like cheerleaders for a Powder Puff football game, Carl tells Hank how to bring a vote before the PTA because he refuses to go up against them himself. However, the vote ends up being a tie, meaning that Carl is the deciding vote, at which point he fakes a heart attack. Oh, Carl. Sorry, Hank. In the courtship of Joseph's father, we see that Joseph has become a pretty damn good quarterback, which grabbed the attention of Spencer Academy, who wanted to recruit Joseph to their team. There's, of course, this... Nice job. But later, in hopes of swaying Joseph's decision, Carl offers him a skeleton key that opens every door in the school. Oh, and he also throws this in. Please. Please stay. In No Bobby Left Behind, we see Carl in full schemer mode when he finds out that he and the rest of the faculty were at risk of losing their jobs due to the No Child Left Behind rules and failing test scores. And rather than work to increase those test scores, Carl comes up with the idea of taking the worst test takers and putting them in a special education class. This ends up backfiring after a trip to Alamo Land where there's an incident on the log ride that Carl can't find a scapegoat for. I'm just going to come clean here. I just labeled those kids special needs so they wouldn't take the test. Of course you did. I'm really stuck here. I don't have anyone to take the blame. Emily's too young to take the fall. And everybody thinks Dale Gribble's a special needs kid. So he ends up having to tell the truth. They try to tutor the kids the best they can, but it still doesn't go well, and Carl ends up being suspended and selling steaks like the J-Bone. And apparently he's not doing too well because... I got that disease where you wake up in strange places drunk. He tried another scheme in Grand Theft Arlen. This one did not include drinking and hang gliding, where in order to appease the school board's call for more computers, they create a virtual PE class where students can play video games that are designed by local junior college students, rather than take actual physical education. It's mentioned in a conversation between Hank and Carl that Carl was dealing with a divorce, plus we get this little gem. Dang, I just got shot in the face. A lot of Carl's appearances are more or less pop-ins, where we get some great lines. Get out of here, Bobby. If those kids could read, they'd be very upset. If I could still feel anything, I'd be inspired. Move along, kids. You want to have a conversation, do it in the back of class. Mm-hmm. What's the story with Gribble's wife? But his biggest episode is Bill Gathers Moss, where it's discovered that after losing his house and car in the divorce, he started living in the school, and apparently using chalk as deodorant for several months. And since Bill is looking for a roommate, it's decided that Carl will move in with Bill, which starts off okay, but the two start to wear on each other. It never stops. Carl, put on your shoes. Carl, get up so I can vacuum. Carl, don't fall asleep on the toilet. Try living with that. This includes Carl putting up posters in the living room because he punched holes in the wall after getting drunk and trying to fight his shadow. When Bill moves in his first choice, a former Playboy playmate who promptly starts hooking up with Carl instead of Bill, things go downhill rather quickly. And it gets even worse when her ex-husband moves in and they start selling counterfeit merchandise, including Carl selling them at school to the students and faculty. Attention students and faculty. Today's fire drill is canceled, so you can take advantage of a fire sale. So stop by the principal's office for some A-plus merchandise at D-minus prices. Eventually, after Bill brings in more roommates and a fight breaks out leading to the cops being called, Carl moves out. The last we see of him is in when Joseph met Lori and made out with her in the janitor's closet. When a hungover or possibly still drunk, Carl catches Joseph and Lori making out in the janitor's closet, which he was going to because... I need some sawdust to clean up some throw-up from 
a kid. So over the course of the series, Carl Moss went from a burned out principal with a wife and kids that you could kind of feel sorry for, to a spineless divorced alcoholic that has no qualms with screwing anyone over to cover his own ass. Now I'm not saying he's the worst principal in animation, but he's not exactly the best principal or person for that matter. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.